Okay, sorry. Um, what you should do is create a, a Google document to have all the important information on the Google document. That way you'll never have to scramble for anything, right? Okay, I'm not for sure what a Google document is. I mean, I'm super, super new on this uh, technology stuff. Okay. Um, okay, I will, I will send you a link to a Google document. Do you use Microsoft or do you use Google? Where do you write your contracts? I just write in my hand. I mean, I just type them up by hand. Okay. And, and how do you I get them to your them. client? I email them. Email. I, I scan them into my fax machine and email them like that. Or else I... I fax machine? Yes. Dude, we need to have a conversation. I know, but you got to remember I'm Amish and I don't have... Okay, but you have a computer, you have a phone, right? Right, I do, but not at not at home. They In the car, it doesn't matter where your computer is, right? Mm -hmm. You have a laptop, correct? Yep. Okay. Um, but I just got it a week ago, and I don't know for sure. I'm not very used to it yet. I don't know really what I'm doing with it yet, but... Um, okay, no, that's fine. Yeah. Um, but use Google Documents. I'll, I'll send you, well, I'm going to send you the business blueprint. Okay. And when you see it, then on the left, you'll see a menu that says file, click on file, then click on new document, then create a new document, then copy and paste whatever contract you have onto that document, right? Then you save it and just add your client's email address and share it with them. You don't have to fax anything. Okay. It's much easier. Well, I'm, I'm going to try to figure it out. I'll try to remember everything. And if I have any problems, I will just shoot you a message on Facebook or something. Yeah, th this is something your VAs can help you with. Or, you know, okay. we can set up a Zoom call. We can share a screen and I'll show you yeah. how to do it. I mean, it's easy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's much easier than faxing. Right. Okay. I just got your, I just noticed, I don't know when you sent me the, the bank information to uh, wire the money. And uh, I sent it to you this you morning. Sent... And the reason okay. why I, I didn't send it, it right morning. away is because I knew there was something going on with you. <clears throat> right. There's something that you're scared about. There's something you're hesitating on and and if you don't talk to me, I, you know, if I can't figure out what's going on inside here, I can't help you. Right. So let's have a man to man conversation. What's going on with you? Well, the main thing was the last couple of days was Friday. Friday, I was doing a little roof and there was rain in the forecast and uh, it rained in the middle of us putting that roof on. And so I was, you know, running around like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to get my guys to get this roof on. I was helping them get it done. Saturday and Sunday, I had a family reunion. So today I went back, finished up the job and getting everything else done. Um, but I was thinking on, so that's why I wasn't on the Zoom call Friday. Um, I, yeah, I was so busy trying to get that roof on before it rained that I just yeah slipped my mind until it was till afterwards um the only thing is on the VAs do I do I have to have three of them right away or can I get no start with, with one start with one you can start with one part-time but, but I mean I, I'm fine with one full-time I'd like okay you know, I'm I'm not scared but at the same time it seems I spend it seems like I've spent, you know, given spent too many 500 here and 500 there on, you know, solutions that didn't turn out to be solutions. You know what I'm saying? And if I, um, or 2000 here or whatever, and I'm thinking if I spend 500 for you and 500 for her for the first month and see how everything goes and feel my way in there a little bit more, it might be better. It, it, do you understand what I'm saying? 
yes, I I understand where you're coming from. What what I also understand is that summer is quickly going to pass us. Okay, summer is going to quickly evaporate. And by the way, your internet connection is not very good. Um, it you know. I'm not very fond of the roofing industry, okay? For the same reasons you just explained a few seconds ago. You can't predict weather, right? And you were caught with your pants down, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you don't have tarps or something to quickly close up the roof and you create damage inside that house, now you've got a lawsuit. Well... I wouldn't have even attempted it on a on a house roof or anything like that because I knew there was a chance of rain. What it was, it was a little press box at a high school. So it, it was just a little, just a tiny little area. I, I could easily cover it if I had to, but I just didn't want to cover everything and then take everything up again and, you know, redo everything. No, I would never have attempted something like that i would never attempt a tear off if there was any if there was any rain to forecast at all i mean okay. i i i wasn't going to um put myself at risk like that you know what i'm saying it was just it was a little deal that i was put, that was about a week late on two weeks late on and i was wanting to get it knocked out real quick and okay yeah but the point that i'm trying to make is if you're building bathrooms how many times are going to be rained out? Zero, right? If you're building, yep. if you're doing painting inside, how many times are going to be rained out? Zero. Okay. Yep. So because, and in winter, how many roofs can you do? I don't know how cold it gets there, but it gets minus 20 here, minus 40, right? So it's uncomfortable. I mean, some companies do it, you know, install roofs in the middle of the winter. But, you know, how many, you know, how many employees want to get up on the roof when it's full of ice? You know, right? you, you don't have ice in the kitchen. You don't have ice in the bathroom. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. I understand what you're saying. Um, the reason that I pick roofing is because it's a quick turnaround you know what i'm saying it's a quick turnaround it's a simple deal yeah. we're in a fairly good climate like last winter we had one cold snap okay only uh, it only went to zero degrees one time and the rest of the winter it was between 30s and 50s so I grew up in Southern Iowa where, you know, we'd have below zero for two, for two weeks straight, but out here in Southern Ohio, we don't. Okay. Um, so, so that, that makes it a lot easier, but I still understand what you're saying. I just understand the roofing a little better than the, okay. So I did a roof job here a while, a couple months ago for, uh, hold on. Try. Before you get off the subject, before you move on, you know, you're you're raising flags as a business owner. It doesn't matter what you know. OK, mm -hmm. because right now you're doing your employees work. Right. Yeah. So you don't need to know how to install a roof. That's your project manager. That's your crew chief. You know, that's your trainer. That's your people. Right. You as the business owner need to know how to lead, motivate and create vision. Okay, so you are doing the wrong job right now as a business owner. How in the world <laughs> do I motivate people that are just not really motivated themselves? How do I attract the right talent? Okay, that's a whole other conversation, right? We don't have enough time for that. But I certainly right. have, you know, enough videos on YouTube that you can search on that. And we've talked about that with other other people. Um, it, you know, the quick answer is, 
And quick answers never solve anything for anyone. But the quick answer is you got to design something to attract them. Okay. In other words, McDonald's, you're at a McDonald's parking lot right now. Um, McDonald's, Burger King, you know, Amazon, you know, an, thousands, hundreds of companies attract millions of minimum wage people. They attract millions of minimum wage people. Why? Because they see an opportunity. They see an opportunity for growth. They see an opportunity to to be trained to be a manager. They see an opportunity for people to be proud of them. Not today, but two or years or five years down the road, right? They want to run a McDonald's franchise. You know, they want to be a manager. They want to be a you know a shift leader, right? They want to grow in the organization. And if you can do that at minimum wage, right? You can do that mm -hmm. if you're a company, but your company has to be designed to be fast growing. Okay. It has to be designed with branding, differentiation, and everything else because people on the other side of the country see your branding and say, hey, I like that. You know, that company looks like it's fast growing. I'm going to move there. I'm going to get a job with that company and I'm going to move there. That's how you attract top talent. Okay. We've had that happening, you know, in Canada, from US to Canada. We've had people move because people see something they want to be part of. That's where branding comes in. That's where differentiation comes in, okay? The best way to attract quality people is a byproduct of an efficient, aggressive marketing system. Not placing ads. Placing ads on, you know, um, I can't even, uh, you know, Indeed or whatever those job apps. We don't even do that because it's a waste uh -huh. of time because now you're attracting unemployed people. Unemployed people, who, who the hell wants unemployed people? There's a reason why they are unemployed, okay? Nobody else wanted them, so why do you want them, okay? So you can't hire from the unemployment pool. You have to hire people who have been happy where they are for the past 10 years. And right now is a perfect time to do that because a lot of companies are slowing down because of the economy. Right. So employees, great employees are nervous. They're saying, am I going to be able to pay my mortgage next month? Right. But then they see a great brand and, and see growth and you see franchising and they see opportunity. They're going to jump. This is the perfect time to grab top talent. OK. Does that yes. make sense? It it does. OK. Um, it, it's just hard for me to figure it out you don't no, no um, daniel you don't need to figure it out that's why i'm here that's okay. why my people exist you don't need to figure it out we figured it out you know 35 40 years ago okay you know another problem i've got even if i would find you know if i do find a really good project manager until the company is up and rolling and i've got steady okay work. Yeah, I, I know where you're going i know where you're going you start people part-time that's why i said if you can't handle three vas or social media managers you start with one you even start with them part-time right and they're they're committed to starting part-time your general manager your sales manager your sales people um your crew chiefs your your project managers will start part-time because they see huge opportunities for them right? They're willing to move across country. They're willing to start part-time. They understand there's a small company right now, but they see the vision. Mm -hmm. Okay. They see the vision. When the McDonald's opens up and they say future uh, site of a McDonald's, they start getting applications immediately, right? right? There's no McDonald's yet, but they know in a year's time or six months time, there will be a McDonald's and they want to work at that McDonald's. Same thing. Mm -hmm. The branding tells them, hey, we're growing. We're going to be a $2 million company in 12 months, right? And people want to be part of that. How do they know you want to be a part of, uh, how do they know you're going to be a, a $2 million company? That's part of the branding. That's part of the, uh, you know, the videos we put out. That's part of the marketing that we put out or your VAs put out, right? 
that on, mm-hmm, not only mm-hmm. attracts profitable clients, commercial and residential profitable clients, it also attracts, you know, 10% of those are employees that say, hey, I want this opportunity. Right. Okay. That's well, how you let, build it. Let's start with two VAs once. Let's start with one. Let's not, you know, I want you to be comfortable. Once you see what a VA, what a well-trained VA can do, right? Then you'll say, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, I see it. Let's start doing this. I've got another yeah. client who we just started. They're, they're in the excavation company. Mm-hmm. And this morning, he got a, a hit on one of his uh, posts. And he got all excited. And I said, you know, it's going to happen, right? Trust me, it's going to happen, right? He was only asking a question, you know, what do you guys do and, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, it's going to happen. And it was only the first post. Mm -hmm. So it's going to happen. You got to have faith that it's going to happen. Right. And um, back to the bathroom remodeling deal compared versus the roofing deal. Um, in a downturn, a downturn in the economy, roofing will probably really increase. Is that not right? Well, see, the beautiful thing about roofing is you've got hailstorms. You've got, you know, you've got nature damaging it. Right. A bathroom, you know, there's no... There's no damage to a bathroom unless it's floods or mold or something. But there are systems, what we call creating the need, right? There's enough people out there with 20-year-old or 30-year-old bathrooms that need to be updated, right? There's Uh always enough work for the aggressive company that differentiates themselves, okay? Okay. And there's nothing wrong with you having, you know, a roofing company, a bathroom company, and a painting company, all separate, all feeding work to each other, right? But completely separate, because you don't want a bathroom company to be doing a roof one day and a bathroom the next. You're going to look like an idiot, right? And jack of all trades. So you got to differentiate yourself. The industry or the consumer or the homeowner or the business owner has to see you as the expert in whatever product he's contacting you. And the reviews have to show it and everything else, the Trust Foundation has to show that you are the expert. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um, I'm gonna try to get, okay, so I've I've gotta meet two people about roofs today yet. This afternoon, I don't know for sure if I'll get to the bank in time to get that money sent to you today. You should be um, able to do it on the phone. You don't need to get to the bank. You can do it online. Are you comfortable uh, doing banking online? Do you not do banking online? I have never, um, I don't think I have online banking. You have it. Whether you use it or not, that's the story. You have it. <laughs> okay. Okay, every bank has online banking. Every bank right. does. Okay. But, but I don't think my account is set up for that or is it? I don't know. I, you can I, easily I set it up if it isn't. When you go to the bank, um, mm-hmm. just say, how do I get set up on lo- to do online banking? Because you can't drive to the bank every time you need to do something, right? You need to right. be efficient. Right, right, yeah. I know I can check my balance and everything on my phone, but I don't know how... Um, yeah, if but, you can check uh, your balance on your phone, you can do transfers, you can do um, everything else. But if you're more comfortable okay. going to the bank, then do that. But have them show you how do I you know, transfer between accounts? How do I pay bills on my phone? How do I do this or that? Okay. Mm-hmm. But take your laptop in, not your phone. Get used to using a laptop. The phone is, you know, the screen is way too small. You can't, I don't use my phone. It's useless. <laughs> I use my yeah. computer. Right? right. Everywhere I go, I take a computer with me. The, the, the reason I have my phone on me all the time is because I'm on roofs all the time. And when people call me, you know, new clients call me and stuff like that, shoot me text messages. And, yeah. you know, that's kind of, I, 
I don't, I'm not working, if I was working in an office, that would be a whole different deal. But right now, I'm, you know, wearing all the hats. Yeah. You know, until we hire you some quality people, because quality people have to produce. So if you hire, you know, a crew chief, he's got to produce, right? He's got to think better than you, not like you, Mm -hmm. better than you. So right. we will we will help you with that as well. Okay. So so what do you want me to get done? Uh, okay. Another uh, question. That quick question I had. So your the bookkeeping lady emailed me a list of stuff to get her. But see, I I didn't you, like between you and I. I didn't like the way she treated you. She treated you like a, you know a five million dollar company. And I said he's not a five million dollar company. He needs some hand holding. Okay. Yeah. And I said do not send that email. She sent the email anyways. Okay. Um. Okay. So like for my tax returns, for instance, I don't have any tax returns on my business. Because my business is only six months old. Right. But but you got to set up the books properly. Okay. It's the setup that you need done. Yeah, but does she have to have my tax? I mean, does she just have to have my personal taxes or no taxes or what? I mean, no, I you need to set up the business because every invoice, um, you have to start putting taxes aside because at the end of the year you don't want to be caught with your pants down okay you need to have you should have a separate bank account so when you collect taxes you transfer it to the tax collection account right so you don't spend that money because it's not your money okay so i'm not charging income tax i mean i'm not charging tax on my roofs i'm paying tax Okay, there's but a problem I'm not... there. There's a problem there. If you're paying taxes, you should be collecting taxes, unless you're exempt because you're a, a Mennonite. No, I'm not exempt from any taxes. Yeah, you're you're okay. kind of scaring me right now because at the end of the year you're going to be in trouble. IRS so, will be calling at your, at your door. You don't want that. Well, I don't know any of my friends that. Okay, so I don't care if your friends are set up properly or not, you need to be set up properly. Right. Okay, so so I buy, say, $30,000 worth of materials and pay 7% tax on it. So I just put that on the bill. I mean, you know, I just I so so the company that I bought from pays those taxes. I don't think that the uh, taxes have to be paid twice. Well, yeah, you're, you're, you're confused. You're, you're, you're going to owe a lot of taxes at the end of the year. You got to collect tax from the homeowner or the business owner or the property management company. You have to collect tax. The taxes you're not collecting, you're going to be responsible for. You've got to collect tax. So, I don't know of any state in the U.S. where you don't collect tax. You have to collect tax. I was not aware of that. Yeah. Okay. If you are a business owner, you have to collect tax. Okay. Um, yeah, my dad was a contractor for 30 years. I don't think he ever collected tax on a job, but um, he probably just didn't do it right. I just thought that you know when I buy yeah I guess I was under the impression when I buy my materials and pay the sales tax on it the sales tax is paid yeah but the material cost is let's say one third of the contract right you're right so or or whatever yeah so so do I put tax on my labor Well, I'm not sure how your state works, but here we have GST and PST. So we have two different taxes. We call it a harmonized tax that I have to collect. Right. 
I, I, I'm going to make a couple phone calls and find out about that because I, I'm not aware. So call, call uh, an accountant and say, you're thinking about starting a roofing company and how do I set it up? And what type of taxes do I need a tax number? Because, you know, chances are you need a tax number in order to collect tax. So make some calls, um, you know, today, tomorrow. Um, but yeah, make some calls. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to get right on the horn about that because I did not. I'm not aware of of having to collect tax, but I might have to. Um, but I don't have a tax ID. I mean, I've got a TIN number, but um, or an EIN number, probably both. But that is just for my personal income tax. I mean, for my business income taxes and my personal income taxes. Is that correct? I believe it is. Well, are you running? So you're not a registered, you're not an LLC, right? Yes, I am. You are. Okay. So um, I, I, I've got an EIN number for my LLC. Okay. Um, yeah. This is not exactly my area. So... Yeah, make I'll some figure, calls. I will do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any other questions? Um, what do I do? Okay, so I, I get you that money today, tomorrow at the latest, and um, send what I figure out the tax situation. Send what I have to the bookkeeping lady. What, what else is on my... Uh, well, don't send anything to the bookkeeping lady. Just because she's asking for that, you know, she, you need a bit of hand-holding. Just have a phone call with her. Have a phone call with an accountant first, okay? Yep, so okay. you get educated about mm -hmm. tax strategies and so on. Once you're a little more educated, then call her or schedule a meeting with her and say, okay, what do I need to set up? I'm only a six month old company. I wanna make sure that my numbers and everything are being tracked. You know, how do I, um, you know, QuickBooks, you know, it, it, eventually you're gonna to need to get on QuickBooks or something similar so you can track your invoices and so on. Um, um, and you need to keep receipts of all your material costs, your labor costs, and and uh, you know your phone bills and everything, because all that is write off in in the business. So you need to keep track of all your expenses for the business. Okay, and you need to set up a system where you track everything to make sure you don't miss anything. Your phone bills, your gas bills, and all your other bills have to be you know up to date and accurate. Okay, so so my VAs, they don't do any of the invoicing or anything like that. Is that correct? Or they can, they? but you're not gonna. It's not like you're gonna have thirty invoices a day. No, uh, I'm not. So that's something you can easily take care of yourself, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because you know what they, we don't want to bog them down with useless stuff. We want to keep the VAs producing new work. Right. Mm -hmm. They need to produce revenue. And if you bog them down with, you know, stuff like invoicing that produces no revenue, that you know, that they're not very productive doing that. Right. right. Exactly. I'm exactly. gonna teach them to produce new sales, new clients. That's what that's yeah. what you need. Right. Okay. And at the same time, we need to start hiring employees or subcontractors or Subcontractors are the best way to control your costs, but they need right. to be loyal to you and they can't steal your clients. I know that's one thing I was trying to figure out. Okay, so like I was just talking to my brother yesterday, him and my dad, I mean, my dad is semi-retired, but they're doing concrete work and whatever. And he was, my brother was just saying, you know, they got about, uh, from one job, they got 10 more jobs, you know, from referrals, two or three people got uh, stopped in while they were doing that job. And then they ended up doing the inspector that came out to look at it. They did her job and then they did her friend's jobs and then they did a couple other friends jobs. Okay. If I would, if, if, 
those would have been my jobs and I would have subbed, it, subbed them out, how would I have controlled that they would call me instead of my the subs? Yeah. Well, see, that's that's uh, there's there are advantages and disadvantages, right? Your project manager, when he goes to a, a job, so let's say it's a residential or even a commercial job, you're leaving a lawn sign. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Any, I, I do. Okay. But it has to look like a professional lawn sign. Send me a picture of your lawn sign because, you know, your lawn sign, you know, should be something substantial. Uh, hey, have you ever looked up my, my um, company or not? Well, I have, but keep in mind, I look at a lot of people every day. Um, okay. I, I'll try to get it. It's, it's, it looks professional. It, it's got my logo and a phone number on it is oh hey uh i need a something to plug in the uh, computer yep the computer here the charger? I, um wh oh, what's your company name again highland roofing and construction no it's not this i don't think is it okay hang on um oh shoot i don't my uh, computer is almost dead, but it's Highland Roofing and Construction. Okay. And um, so all I've got is my my uh, logo, and then underneath it has my phone number, email address, and says uh, specializing in commercial and residential roofing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is the link on your Facebook profile? No, it's not. I don't believe. Okay, that's he, see, that's a problem. That's a lot of stuff that we need to fix because everything should be promoting the business. H i g h l a n d, roofing and construction LLC. And by the way, that's uh, way too long for a, for a URL. You you wouldn't use that long of a business name or? No. I'm getting a lot of Highland uh, roofing construction in my area as a, as a search. Uh, Highland uh, roofing and construction, construction. LLC. Hillsboro, Ohio. Yeah, uh, I'll 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 look at it later. The fact that you don't show up it means that you know you're not getting any clients from your website, are you? No, I'm not. But it's it's such a new website. They told me that it'll probably have to be at least a year or two old before I will get very much. Yeah. Now you know why we age websites. We right. age websites for ten or twelve years. Mm -hmm. Um, so I will look at that. Um, I will, I didn't want to send you, <coughs> I didn't want to, sorry. <clears throat> I didn't want to send you the, uh, the outline of the business blueprint until we had a chance to talk because I'm concerned about too much information and information overload. So. <clears throat> But I'll send you the outline to get a sense of what we're talking about in terms of differentiation and uh, in creating, you know, the wow factor. Right. Without that wow factor, you're not going to get a, a lot of these referrals that you're talking about. Right. One more thing real quick before we end the phone call on a different subject. I was talking to a roofer in Florida that I was just I was just I try to network with as many roofers as I can. Um, and he supposedly has come up with a really, really, really good roof coating that is like pennies on the dollar of what I pay for roof coatings. But I don't, I'm not going to go put my company on the line without knowing for sure. And he's looking for investors 
and I don't know how legit this deal is. You know what I'm saying? But if it yeah. is a legit deal, it's a place where somebody could make a lot of money. Do you know anybody that would be a good person to refer him to? I, I'm, well, I'm... refer him to me because we, we invest in companies. We've got companies right now that are that we're funding between, you know, 25 million and 300 million. So we've got investors. Um, that's part of our CEO club. <clears throat> so we get multi-million dollar, sometimes billion dollar companies coming to us because they get stuck in a certain division. So we help them find, you know, top quality uh, talent, executives mm -hmm. and funding. We okay. we funded a hundred million dollar fish farm not too long ago. So, so yeah, so, send them to me. Yeah. And see, the question that I would have is, you know, if this coding falls apart, who's guaranteeing the job, right? With That's Coughlin, my... if something falls apart, you've got Coughlin to save your butt. Right? right. I was I was thinking about setting the owner of Conklin up with him, and seeing if you know, checking it out, you know, honestly, there's probably a 90% chance that it's not, not going to work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you're in the business of uh, roof coatings or whatever your business you're in, you always have to be looking for the next great product, right? And so, uh, you know, if 10% of the, of the stuff works out and you know, you waste your time on 90% of it, you're still doing good. You know what I'm saying, right? It, 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 am I not right? I mean, well, you, you, yeah, you've see, got to go through a bunch of that other stuff. Yeah, if we were talking about a bicycle, <clears throat> mm -hmm. you know, what can go wrong, right? You get a flat tire, you know, the frame, uh, the carbon frame breaks or something. So you've lost $3,000. But when you're talking about an airport roof or, you know, a 400 square, thousand square foot roof and it fails that's a different story right I people know. pay the money because they want to protect what's inside the roof so right. credibility and trust has to be there so i would want to see or they would want to see you know third party testing you know mm -hmm. show me the oldest roof that you've had with this formula i want to see how right. it stands out to everyday weather in the sun and and you know the ultraviolet light and everything else, right? right? So a new roof coating, you know, has to be tested for at least 10, 15, 20 years before right. it can it can be taken seriously. Right? Does that make sense? But to have them uh, set, uh, you know, get them in touch with me or connect with me. Um, you know, I want to talk to them and maybe we can find investors if there is that foundation. Are you still there? Hello. Your camera is off. I can't hear you. Hello, hello. <clears throat> you may have to disconnect and reconnect if you're having problems. Hello.